drop in on Monday night time. Attention, Sudbury football fans. Do you want to win a trip to Super Bowl 48? I know I do. Let me tell you how you can do that. Joe McDonald Youth Football League is holding a raffle. They are selling tickets to win a trip for the Super Bowl in New York City. That's Super Bowl 48. You can win two tickets for you and a friend. You would also get $500 spinning money, transportation to, fr- to and from, that's your flight there and back, plus a hotel stay for three nights at a four-star hotel. How do you get these wonderful tickets? Well... You buy a raffle ticket. And how do you buy a raffle ticket? Well, you can go to one of many locations. For those locations, you can go to joemcdonaldfootball.com, or you can just listen to my next little bit. They are Beef and Bird. You can get them there. Cubit Portable Storage. Dr. M. Staffen, New Sudbury Chiropractic. Eddie's Restaurant and Sports Bar. Kicks Hot New Country, 91.7 FM. Lockerbie Confectionery. The Lounge 390 at the Quality Inn. New North Fuels. New Sudbury Shopping Mall at the Lottery Center. Nickel Belt Camping, Pro-Am Sportswear, and at the Rainbow Mall at the Lottery Center. And if this is not good enough for you, well, you can place your order by phone. That phone number to call for those raffle tickets, 705-524-2970. How much do these tickets cost, you ask? Well, the Joe McDonald Youth Football League is entering its 20th season. So why not make the tickets $20? And they did! Tickets, $20. You can get them now. Win your trip. Go to Super Bowl 48. Who knows who's playing? Looks like Denver Broncos, maybe, but hey, you get to be there if they are. So win your trip to New York City and Super Bowl 48 by visiting JoeMcDonaldFootball.com and picking up your raffle tickets, because it goes for a great cause, and hey, you might win a trip to New York City. All right, welcome to another episode of NFL Pick'em, and we are going OG. It's just me and Tyler, as as it was in the first episode, so it shall be this episode. Uh, we are doing week seven picks. Say hello, Tyler. What's up, guys? And tonight we're back to basics. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a look at last week's picks, which we all did fairly well in. However, you did not win, Tyler. Yeah, I know, but I changed <laughs> like half my pitch just to make it more entertaining last week. It, it was uh, <laughs> quite a bit interesting. And, I mean, we did all very well. Like, you and Adam both finished with 10 and 5. Uh, on your picks, and myself and James finished at 11 and 4. So, I mean, there wasn't a, a big gap. It was pretty darn close. It was pretty much one game here or there where the uh, tide turned. Like, for example, you picked the Rams. You were the only one who picked the Rams. And I think that was kind of a joke, in I, a way. No, honestly, the Rams have actually been doing deceptively good. So, we all picked the Texans. You got the Rams. They won. They beat the Texans. And Matt Schaub did go down. So, uh, there is that. Yeah, but don't worry. His backup got him covered and threw the pit sit to keep the streak going. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what counts. <laughs> and then uh, I think the other turning hey, point... The game I'm most upset about is San Diego managing to upset the Colts. Man, I, I sure we thought all the, Colts. the Colts. So, I mean, that was, that was oh. a wipe all the way across the board. Uh, the Colts couldn't even score a touchdown. Three field goals. That was the extent of their offense in that game. And that was just... That was crazy. Uh, another across the board wipe was we all picked the Saints. Even the Patriots fan, James, picked the Saints, and the Patriots actually pulled out a fluky win in the end of the game. So, hey, you can't call that a fluke. I'm sorry. That's a fluke. When it's Kembrell, no, it's when it's Kembrell Tompkins catching the ball, that's a fluke. If that's Doesn't Gronkowski, matter. that's the, if that's, that's the thirty second. It doesn't matter. That's the thirty second time Tom Brady has made a comeback in the fourth quarter or overtime to win the game. Uh, thirty two times. Yeah. That's Two entire regular yeah. seasons worth of coming from behind on his last drive. Yeah. That is just clutch. Yeah. That's what Romo wishes he could do. Uh, I, I, every time I think of Brady, I just get angry. <laughs> That's because you're in the division. Like, and how many times has how many times out of those thirty two has he done it uh, to your team? Well, that's why. No, it's it's not actually. It, it 
because there was a time where the Bills dominated that division. And that's when I first got into football. We're not talking were, about the 50s. No, we're talking the 90s. <laughs> the, the 80s and the 90s. Early 90s, we'll say. Um, after about 94, 95, that was kind of a down, that was the downward spiral. They still made playoffs, but they haven't been to the playoffs since 2003, which is 10 years now. Uh, big long drought. Um, it's been a very long time for the Bills, but, uh, they haven't had a quarterback since Jim Kelly, so. Well, see, that's the thing about the NFL. There's ebb and flow. Yeah, well, I'm every, looking every, for the uh, ebbing <laughs> of the Patriots because as long as – and you know what? It, it's not always Brady. You know what it is more? It's their coach. I hate their coach so much. Um, he's a cheater, and I think he should have been fired and suspended from the league forever for that. But that's me. So They took their hits, and the league called it fair, and – I have to deal with it, but until that man is no longer coaching in the NFL, I will hate everywhere he coaches, and that right now, and probably forever for the rest of his career, will be New England. Okay, since you're going, in my opinion, a little bit overly harsh on the Belichick thing, what do you think of Sean Payton last year? Was that justified? <laughs> uh, he, yes, that was cheating, but it was a different kind of cheating. And in that respect, uh, the one-year ban... Why didn't they do that to the coach of the New England Patriots? I think they were a lot harder on something that was a lot more controversial and was and it was proved to be controversial when they overturned turned a lot of the player suspensions. So that thing to me was a way more controversial than basically catching the guys red handed by taping, you know, the the games and taping the, the, the signals and all that that the that Belichick was getting done. And what did he get? He basically got a slap on the wrist, you have to admit, compared to Sean Payton. Did he even get slapped or did he just get patted? He got a fine. Back? He got a fine. That was it. And I mean he's 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 been uh but you know, I will say this. Since that since they stopped cheating, whether you wanna classify it as cheating or not, I think it is. I totally believe that it was fully cheating. Since they were caught, they have not won a Super Bowl. Hmm. They did lose two. They lost two, but they haven't won one. Why? Because they True. can cheat. <laughs> and, either that, or either that, or the Giants have their number. The Giants just couldn't lose to them. It was. It didn't matter what they did; they could not beat the Giants. It's both. It's like a couple of years ago, every time uh, Indy and Manning went to the playoffs and got beat by the Chargers, it was that two or three years in a row? Yeah. Or, Sometimes the teams just got your number. Just beat them uh, two years in a row, and then the third year they had the, the Broncos or the Broncos. That's where he's playing now. The Colts had the game at home. And they won. So it was like, let's not go to that uh, outdoorsy place. Let's let's get this into the Indianapolis Dome, and we're going to win. And they did. So, I mean, it, location, location, location sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's why That's why I want the Super Bowl to come back up north so we can get a nice cold one. Well, we are going to get a cold one, right? I mean, we're playing in MetLife Stadium, are we not? This Man. That's not. I'm. Th- I'm talking like Pittsburgh or Green Bay. <laughs> I'm talking somewhere where it gets yeah, they cold. Yeah, they tend to put the Super Bowl where it's warm. Like this is going to be the first yeah, cold Super Bowl in a long time, I think. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking like the old open stadium yeah. where it snows on oh, people. <laughs> MetLife is open, isn't it? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure MetLife is an open stadium. All I know is I was in Pittsburgh in November and I was <laughs> cold. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, they they get a lot of um, a lot of winds off the lakes there, so yeah, uh, it's just like being in uh, Toronto or something like that. It's- well, they're just lucky they don't have a February Super Bowl in like Winnipeg. <laughs> Do you imagine going to Manitoba? It'd be ice Bowl. <laughs> oh, it'd be brutal. Yeah. All right. Uh, the other games that were last week that are kind of interesting. Uh, first of all, your Steelers got their first win, big win for them. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm going to maintain my. Uh, like I, I did pick them to win, and I'm glad they did because you know it helped my record. But I will say this: I, I said the same thing when the Ravens won their first game. They had a, 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 the heart and soul there, Ray Lewis, who was at the Steelers game this weekend. None other than Coach Cower. I'm not <laughs> he saying common, that he was in the commentator. Doesn't booth. matter. He was there. He was around the team. <laughs> He's not usually there on Sundays. It doesn't matter. That is ridiculous. I'm just even, saying it's a coincidence. Did you see Mike Tomlin's record? 
Mike Tomlin has one of the top three best records in first hundred games. I'm not saying for anything st- against starting the heading coach for starting head have, coaches. You know, I have nothing against the Steelers. It was just a coincidence that the Ravens' first win came because Ray Lewis was on the sidelines, and I truly believe that. And yes, that one, that one, I will agree. This one just happened to come on the one day of the year that that CBS decides they're going to send three of their talents out to their former teams. And the Broncos won, the Bengals won, and the Steelers won. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's just crazy. Speaking of those Bengals, they almost did not win. In fact, yeah, I know. Blew the game. I was, I was cheering for the Bills. Yeah, Everyone else. Two touchdowns. Uh, Thad Lewis. Wow. Like, why is Jeff Tool on this team? <laughs> you know, here's here's my thinking, and I, and I listened to this podcast called Buffalo Rumblings because I'm a Buffalo fan. It's called the Buffalo Rumblings Podcast. They're all Buffalo Bills fans, and they're they're very into the statistics and everything. But they, they said that when they got Thad Lewis, it was just before the week four of the preseason. And Jeff Tool was basically phenomenal in the preseason. He had to come in and basically lead the team for over for a half each game because Kolb was out with a concussion, and EJ was out with the, uh, I think it was a knee sprain. Um, so, I mean, he, you had both your, your going into the preseason, your top two rated quarterbacks out. So Jeff Toole took a lot of the snaps and he had over a 73% completion percentage. He, his, uh, quarterback rating was really high. So I think the Bills felt that if they were to drop him to waivers to try and put him on the practice squad, uh, he would be picked up. And I guess they didn't want that, but I guarantee you with the signing of Matt Flynn, with the performance of Thad Lewis, when EJ Manuel comes back, he might get dropped down to waivers, might not get back picked up because of how bad he played in the, the Browns game, and he might wind up on the practice squad. It might be almost like a swap between Jeff Th- Toole and, and Thad Lewis because Thad Lewis was actually really good. Like I mean, he made mistakes, but he's a young quarterback. Second career start. Well, it'll definitely be interesting to see how that works yeah. out. I don't know half the people you're talking about. But the Bengals I don't follow come the back Bears. and win that in the uh, overtime, so our picks were sound. We did pick the Bengals in that one. Uh, but it was a lot closer than I anticipated it being. Probably than most people anticipated. <laughs> exactly. Well, I But it does show how shady the AFC North is. I did text you and say, they're going overtime. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and, and that's pretty much about it. We talked about the Chargers beating the Colts, which was just brutal. How about Cam Newton's big game? Cam Newton, he's back, or is it a fluke? I think it's a fluke, essentially. I don't think he's going to be consistently that good. I mean, the Vikings are hurting now. I mean, they're near they're in the bottoms with a lot of the teams. With, uh, what, the Vikings have no wins, or do they have one win? They have won. They beat the Steelers. That's right. They beat the Steelers in London. That's right. Uh, The game that I thought the Steelers actually looked like uh, a better team out of all the games they had played up to that point. Uh, That was their best game, even though they lost. Yeah, there were some things that didn't quite click on offense and defense that game. Okay, so let's get into Week 7 picks. And uh, we've got... Two write-in votes this week, because as we said earlier, Adam's sick and James doesn't come on the podcast, mostly because he works and, you know, he has a life. <laughs> so he, he sends his write-in votes and, you know, we, we keep it on, uh, on the level and he's got some interesting picks, but we'll get to them as we go. So let's start with Thursday. We got the Seattle Seahawks going into Arizona, taking on the Cardinals. I have a feeling where I know where you're going with this, but let's hear what you got to say. I'm thinking Seahawks. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not impressed with what the Cardinals are doing. The Seahawks have not quite been as good as last year, one could say. They have had yeah. a little bit of struggles. Yeah, but still, we saw that. They're they still lost. playing pretty good football. They're being consistent. They're getting the wins. Yep. I think they got this in Arizona. They they are um, – yeah, they're, they're, their only loss that was kind of shocking was the Colts loss, I think. And it, I don't know if it was so much shocking – because you see the Colts, and they've been a much better team this year, or they've looked like a much better team, even though they were a playoff team last year. They've played better in, in a lot of games, but then you see them lose to the Chargers like that, and you're like, huh. Could be just a bad game, and, you know, every team has them. As we always say, 
uh, any team can win on any given day. It, it's just a any given of, Sunday. Any given Sunday. Love that movie, by the way. <laughs> but any given Sunday, a team can win. It, it, it doesn't matter what your rank. Hell, the Jacksonville Jaguars could win a game eventually. Whoa, whoa, that, that's not push it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's getting a little bit there. I'm going to really give that run at the 0 and 16 Detroit Lions from a few years ago, I think. So <laughs> <laughs> that's my personal prediction there. All right. So I am also picking the Seahawks in this one. As, as you said, the Cardinals, uh, while they've had signs of brilliance, I mean, they're not an 0 and 0 for team. They, they've won a game or two. Um, don't have the standings up. I don't know why I don't have the standings up, but uh, they've they've won uh, what one or two games I think. They're three and three. Three and three. So there you go. They've won three games, and um, so I mean they can win games, but not against Seattle. Uh, I, I mean I said this before. I know they're not in Seattle, but Seattle's such a good team. Uh, they were picked to be one of the best teams in the West. Or, I mean, sorry, in the NFC, and they are. They're tied with the Saints with the best record. So, it, it's going to be, I think right now, if you were to pick teams out of the NFC to meet in the NFC Championship game, you got to go Saints-Seahawks, right? They're the only two teams in the NFC that are 5-1. and one. Yep. The, the, only only other, two. the only other teams that could, that'll that challenge them is if Green Bay gets their stuff together. And the, Someone out of the NFC North. Because they got Detroit and Chicago at four and two, and Green Bay at three and two. Yeah, that that is that is going to be a tough division. Like basically, you're going to get one team out of the South, which is the Saints. You're going to get one team out of the East, and we have no idea who that's going to be. <laughs> honestly, get, right now it could think, still be the Giants. Honestly, my you're right. There'll be one out of the North. I'm not sure who that's going to be because it's pretty close. Whoever comes out of the East, no one cares. They're going one and done. Yeah. The South, the Saints are going to take that, and then the West is going to bring up Seattle and San Francisco. And then the other wild card will probably be from the North, like Detroit and Chicago yes. or Green Bay. Like one of those three teams is going to be the division winner, and one of those three teams is probably going to be the wild card from the NFC North. So, and then that's just going That'll by what, what's been happening uh, in the past six weeks. So, I don't know, but yeah, uh, Seahawks has been taken all across the board. James also picked the Seahawks, as did Adam. So that's I just want to know who's going to win the AFC West. Kansas City and Denver are both sits and 0. Yeah, but they play each other <laughs> twice, and those are going to be the key games, I think. Those yeah. are going to be the key games. So My money's on Denver, I'm but... I'm looking Kansas... forward to that first matchup, because I believe that uh, whoever wins that first matchup is definitely going to take a huge edge in that division. My money's on Denver. My money's on Denver as well. So let's move on to the Sunday night games, or Sunday afternoon games. We have the 1 o'clock starts, starting with the Buccaneers taking on the Falcons in Atlanta. Now the Falcons, let's remember, no Julio Jones, no Steven Jackson, and probably no Roddy White. Who you got? The Falcons. And my only, this is what I'm going to say. Yes, the Falcons have played terrible. Yes, they have a lot of injuries. But what the hell are the Buccaneers doing? They suck. I agree 100%, even <laughs> losing their number one running back, their two top receivers, because it, it, all indications are that uh, Roddy White will not play. So they're going to be using their, their third and fourth and fifth receivers as their one, two, and threes. Uh, they still have Tony Gonzalez. They still have Matty Ice. They still have a decent defense. I'm not going to say it's a great defense, but they've been decent this year. Against a Buccaneers team that is, what, 0-4, I think, right now? Yep. They've had a bye. 0-5, 0-5, yeah, they've had one bye, so they're 0-5. <laughs> no, they're not going to do it against the Atlanta Falcons, and uh, especially not in Atlanta. So, no, yeah, and this again, Falcons sweep across the board. James picked them, and Adam picked them. All right, so let's move on to a game that might have some different picks. Bears at the Washington Redskins. I went with the Bears on this one. Uh, the Redskins are starting to show signs that they can win games. However, they are still 1-4. The Bears have shown that they can actually have uh, Cutler play well, but we have seen a game, at least one of them, where he played like the Cutler of old. But I think Mark Tressman has done so much good for the Chicago Bears that I had to pick them in this game. Yeah, I got to go with the Bears. I can't see. 
I mean, RG3 has been playing a lot better. Mm -hmm. Washington has made some improvements, Mm -hmm. but the Bears need to prove that they can win their division and that they're a Super Bowl ready team. Yeah. They're definitely a playoff ready team. Playoff ready team, I first. They got to prove that they can do something in the playoffs and they got to get wins against people like RG3. Even though Washington's one and four. Yeah. They still got to prove it and beat these people. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Washington has taken strides in the right direction. RG3, uh, he's looked better. I, I said by week four, week five, we might start seeing the RG3 of old, and we're just starting to see that now. Uh, they did have, they've had their bye already, right? Yes, because they're one and four. So they've yeah. already had their bye week. So he's as rested as he's going to be for the rest of the year. Now it's just a matter of mentally getting back in the game. I think physically he's there. But mentally, I, and you've, I don't know if you've noticed, I haven't watched many Washington games, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I've seen some highlights, but he doesn't seem like he's doing the read option as much anymore. They've kind of gone away from that. They don't um, have a choice. And, and, and it, everybody's saying, well, they don't have a choice because they don't want him to get hurt. But that's what made him so dynamic last year. You take that away and you make him basically a pocket passer, that's not his style, and I think that's kind of playing with his mentality. Yeah, but the, the read option is not being anywhere near as effective. Geno Smith tried the read option against the Steelers, who arguably have not been playing very well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they went 0-4, and they shut it down. Uh, I think it still can be run very well, and even if you're not doing read option, uh, why not have no, him bootleg and, and run it around the end? You know, like I mean, he's got speed. The read not option just... will still only be effective... If that quarterback can establish the pass, that that's so the only two in my point in my opinion the only two quarterbacks right now that will be able to run a successful read option are Terrell Pryor and Russell Wilson. Agreed, because they're the only two that can switch to the passing game and beat you in the air, make those people play back, and then run the read option. If people like Colin Kaepernick or RG three, I would throw Kaepernick up there though. Now he's shown some Not, brilliance this year on the passing side. I'm I'm still not convinced. I wouldn't, he hasn't, so, I wouldn't he hasn't say been that throwing he's at at, at uh, Russell Wilson's level or even Terrell Pryor, True. who's who's not necessarily he's not a rookie. I'm pretty sure he's not a rookie, but he's a, he's a young starter. Uh, I would not say he's up there yet, but he's definitely I think right now ahead of RG three. Yes, I'll give you that. But if you if you stack the bots and force them to throw against you and to take out that read option, they're not as effective. That's my argument. Russell Wilson and Terrell Pryor can still beat you with a passing game yeah. and then force you to open up your defense where they can then run the read option, just like a play action. Yeah, and how about Seattle possibly getting – I know we've already left that game, but Seattle possibly getting Percy Harvin back shortly. That would be a definite boon. <laughs> he had some pretty good stats last year. Yep. Okay, so we got Bears, I got Bears, and Adam got Bears. Only James picked the Redskins, so I don't know what James is thinking there. <laughs> we, that's James's upset pick of the week. I think don't worry, I'll, I'll pick mine later. All right. All right, so next up we got the Cowboys taking on Philadelphia in Philadelphia. Adam's already picked the Cowboys, as has James. Who do you got? Eagles. We got the Eagles have always been good against their division. Within their division, they've always been very strong, even when they suck against everyone else. Right. And, I mean, I, I can't pick Tony Romo. I just can't do it. <laughs> Who throws for 500 yards and, and four touchdowns the and then loses the game with a last-minute interception? Uh, I also went uh, Philly on this one, so we got two and two on this pick. I went this one, Philly. That'll be a good game. Uh, I think it's going to be a great game, and everybody's going to point to the fact that Tony Romo can throw for all these yards. And you're right. they He can. But he can also throw the game away, as we saw in that Broncos game, where it was basically a shootout at the OK Corral, and all he had to do was march down the field for a field goal, and they win that game. All but, he had to do was not screw up. Yeah, and what did he do? He throws an interception. Now, I'm also going to say this. The Cowboys are without DeMarco Murray. Now, that uh, Randall, oh, I forget his first name, um... The, the running back that took over for DeMarco Murray this past week had a decent game. Is he going to have that every week? No. I think Nick Foles, is that his name? Uh, yeah. Who's replaced Michael I, Vick? Nick. I believe that's who it is. Okay, Nick Foles has shown in two games now that he's almost a better quarterback than Michael Vick. And I think he's making Chip Kelly question when Michael Vick is healthy whether he should just throw Michael Vick back in there right away. Now, he probably will do that because he is Michael Vick, and you're paying him to be that, but Nick Foles has not shown anything 
bad yet. So I, I, I had to go with the Eagles. And at home, too. Okay, Nick Foles has shown up in three games so far. Okay. He's got six touchdowns, 542 yards. Mm-hmm. No picks. Now, if you just... No picks. He's, his passing completion is 67. Mm-hmm. Compared to Vitt's 53. Uh-huh. They're averaging the same amount of yards per attempt. Yep. Vitt only has five touchdowns. And two picks. So Nick Foles and two picks. So Nick Foles is actually having more touchdowns and less. He has 127 quarterback rating toward the 90 of Michael Vick. There you go. Right in the numbers. Says it all. I Honestly, mean, if Vick comes back, I'm still want to go with Foles. Yeah. And, and give, give the kid a chance. And I, if I'm Chip Kelly, I have to go with Nick Foles too. I mean, he's shown that he can do stuff with the football. He's shown that he can protect the football. And he's pretty much giving you almost the same kind of numbers, only better uh, percentages than Vic was. So why wouldn't you stick with the guy who's actually getting things done more efficiently? I think the key is the completion ratio, the yeah. completions. Yeah. He's made, the fact that he's making more completions is a huge, because yeah. Vic is not the most accurate of passers. No, and, and he throws a lot on the run because he does like to move. Yeah. So, and that helps. But yeah, Eagles, and you and you were right when you made the statement that the Eagles are always tough against their own division. They are. And, I, and that's why I think I got to give it to the Eagles on this one. So let's move on to another one. Uh, Patriots uh, at the Jets. Jets looking for some revenge for the week two loss. Uh, what do you got? I just want to say this is not my upset pick. Patriots all the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a clean sweep. We've all picked the Patriots, and Adam and James agree. Um, now, as, in that saying, I'm surprised no one picked the Jets because they've have, so far they've won and then lost every time. Yeah. They win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, and they lost last week. So you're expecting them to win a little bit? No, not at all. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I, um, I think Geno Smith is going to show up, and then Tom Brady's going to show him what a good quarterback looks like. I'm still not sold on Tom. He's bitten me in the ass on every uh, fantasy time I start him. He He's come back and bit me in the ass. Um, Does, don't worry about Fantasy doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Brady, it doesn't when it comes to Tom wins Brady, and losses. It Tom Brady is a quarterback that will win. Yeah, it doesn't when it comes to wins and losses, but he's not throwing up the numbers this year is all I'm saying. Um, doesn't matter. I'd rather have five wins. Oh, yeah. I agree. I'd, I agree. I'd rather... I'd rather have the Patriots record and playing than than the Cowboys, than Romo, who arguably has better numbers, better fantasy well, stats. I, I read, uh, I did my podcast yesterday where I talked about uh, the top five passers in the league. And you know who's fifth on that list as far as yardage? Eli Manning. What's his record? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. Numbers aren't everything. Like, I mean... Yeah, he it, as far as fantasy goes, he would lose a ton of points because he's thrown 15 picks and been sacked 16 times. But at the same time, he's throwing up a lot of yards. See, in uh, my opinion, Tony Romo, same thing. He wins Trump stats, and, and it does. You're right. Uh, you look at Tom Brady; he has less than 1,500 yards right now. He's only thrown eight touchdowns. Uh, he's been sacked 16 times, so he's been sacked the same amount of times as Eli. He's uh, been picked four times, yet he's winning games. And you know what? Four of those picks, are three of those four picks are against the Buffalo Bills. And obviously he's doing something right. He came back out of nowhere to win uh, against the Saints. God, that made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was just a maddening night because not only that, the Boston Red Sox won that game, won their game that night too. So it was just like, ah! <laughs> uh, honestly, the the Yankees aren't winning the World Series, so I don't really care about baseball. But that's all I care about. As long as the Yankees don't win, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, the Patriots are going to win this game, I think, even though it's in New York, uh, or technically it's in New Jersey. That's where the stadium is. But <laughs> even though it's it, it's in the Jets' home field, I don't think the Jets have proved enough that even though they were close in the first time they met, I think the Patriots are a different team than the first time they met. Now, I will say this. In the Jets' favor, there is no uh, Vince Wilfork, and there's no Gerard Mayo. So that defense is not as strong as it was 
earlier in the season. And Wilfork's done for the year, I believe. I believe um, they've put Mayo on injured reserve uh, possibility to return, which means out for eight weeks. So there is a slim chance because the defense isn't as strong. But the Doesn't offense. Matter. Gino Smith has thrown ten interceptions. Oh, I agree. There's a there's a good chance he's going to throw an interception. I agree. There's a good <laughs> chance he throws an interception. But I'm just saying there's a chance the run defense is not going to be strong. Vince Wilfork is basically their entire run defense, so their run defense is not going to be as strong as it has been. And there is people who can run in uh, New York. So I'm just saying I'm just playing devil's advocate. I still pick the Patriots, but. I'm just saying, there is that glimmer of hope. And that's all you need sometimes to win a game. Speaking of glimmers of hope, our next game, Bills at the Dolphins. Squish the fish, I say. I've got the Bills. And why do I got the Bills? Not only are they my favorite team, but I am impressed with the way Thad Lewis played. And um, even though uh, Jarius Bird had limited snaps in his first game back, it was his first game back. So I'm going to pick the Bills on this one, even though I might lose this pick. But I, I like the way Thad Lewis played, and I think he can run that offense. C.J. Spiller's getting healthier. Fred Jackson's been Fred Jackson. I, I mean, he's just been normal Fred Jackson. So that's been good. And Stevie Johnson's back. He wasn't in the last game. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going with the Bills. Miami has lost their last two games. They're coming off a bye week. Uh-huh. They're going to win at home. And you know what? I, I can't argue with any of that. Uh, and here's what sucks. The Bills this year on their schedule play, I think, three or four teams that are going to be coming off a bye week. That is horrendous scheduling. That is just – like the league hates the Buffalo Bills for crying out loud. Three times this year they were go- they're going to be playing a team that is coming off of a, a bye week. And this is the first one. And it sucks, but here's the thing. The Dolphins started 3-0, and everybody was like, wow, this, they're, they're, they're doing so good. But then they lost two straight. Can't, yeah, we have to look at it, who they lost to. I know, but they were still expected to win one of those two games, I believe. I can't remember. Uh, against New Orleans, and I think the other one was Chicago. No, it wasn't Chicago. I think so. Uh, let me check. All right. Uh, while you're doing that, I will let you know that the Bills have also been picked by James, but the Dolphins has been picked by Adam. So, I'm guessing you're going with the Dolphins. Right? They they barely lost to the Ravens. That's Ravens what it was. 26, I, it, I, I actually expected them to win that game because the Ravens have not been as good. Still, I think uh, Losing Miami... Losing Saints, no, no big deal. I mean... I think Miami is a mid-tier team. Mm-hmm. And that they will lose to big teams like the Saints oh, yeah. and the Ravens, but they'll beat the Bills, oh. especially at home. My money's on do- do- oh. Dolphins. That's fine. I, I have to take the Bills in this week. Uh, last week I didn't take them because I said they're they're pulling in a quarterback from the friggin' practice squad. But after seeing what that quarterback did, it's not that much of a drop-off from E.J. Manuel. And I think E.J. Manuel could have come into this game if he was healthy and won. Thad Lewis is not a big drop-off, so I think Thad Lewis could go into this game and the Bills could possibly win. So because that possibility is higher than I would have expected like two weeks ago when EJ went down to the Browns, I am picking the Bills. So let's move on to a game where I think it's going to be clear across the board on who is going to win, and that's the Chargers taking on the Jaguars. As much as it pains me, I gotta take the Chargers. There's absolutely no reason to pick the Jaguars in any game this year unless they play Tampa Bay. And then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, I'd probably go Jaguars over Tampa Bay. I don't know. I might still take the muscle hamster over MG Day. <laughs> MG Day D. <laughs> and that there's not much to say about that game. Yeah. The Chargers are gonna it's a win for them. Yeah, I have now, they still have to, they still have to show up and play. They still have to do everything right. This but... is a clear across the board pick. Uh, the Chargers, uh, there's just, like, I mean, they could lose the game, as we said, any given Sunday, somebody can lose. But there's there's been no indication from Jacksonville that they even want to play this year. 
Hey, they were just happy they covered the spread last week. Uh, and yeah, I mean, everybody was shocked that they did. And I think <laughs> the pick six is what did it. <laughs> I mean, Manning threw a pick six and it wasn't Eli. <laughs> so. I think the problem was that the Broncos were just too overconfident to like, oh, we got this. Um, and that reflected in their gameplay. I, possibly. But I think it was more um, when you come up against a juggernaut like that as the opposing team. You just want to make a good showing. And I think Jacksonville did. I mean, there was no way they were, they knew they weren't going to win that game. Everybody knew they weren't going to win that game. But I still think the game was, well, not really close, but close-ish. More it was close because of the what, first half. After the first more half, of because of what the Broncos didn't do than what the Jaguars yeah. did. And that's one thing I've noticed with the Broncos. Sometimes if they have a bad first half, they make so many great adjustments at halftime that they come out and they, like, look at game week one, right? Against the Ravens. The first half wasn't, it was close, wasn't it? It was tied or, or within three points or within a touchdown or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I know the first half was very close. It wasn't until the second half started that Bron- the Broncos just poured it on. So, I mean. That just comes down to great coaching. Oh, they have a does. very, it very good coaching staff. Coaching. And that's what I'm saying. I think in the first half, they kind of made – the Broncos made Jacksonville look competitive. But in that second half, again, the Broncos kind of took over, and being the Broncos, they, you know, won the game. But, yes, Chargers, no way Jacksonville wins this game. I think the Chargers are good enough defensively. And, you know, I know you don't like picking uh, Phillip Rivers for anything, but in this game, I mean, you have to pick the Chargers. All right, so let's move on to the next game. Rams taking on the Panthers in Carolina. I've got the Panthers. I think I don't think Cam Noon can do what he did last week. Okay. I got the Rams. All right. I've got the Panthers because I'm hoping that Cam Newton is back. And, yes, you're right. It, it could have been a one-week fluke. Uh, he beat um, a team that probably – should have won in the Vikings, but the Vikings have problems at quarterback. The Vikings have a lot more than just quarterback problems. Yeah, I know, but I think also, uh, even though he played, and I commend Adrian Peterson for playing, I mean, the the loss he suffered, and, and I mean, that's just tragic in and of itself. Like, I mean, I can't, I, when I read, when I first read that, I, I had to reread it because I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, that happened? That's just yeah. That's a tragedy. Absolute tragedy. And I mean, all my thoughts and 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 well wishes definitely go to Adrian Peterson. But the fact that he played in that game still, and he had, and he even said he goes, look, there's no, there was no way I was going to play football. Has gotten me this far in life. Without it, I would probably not be alive in a sense, you know. So I mean, I understand, but it was just so traumatic experience. And then the Play a football game. I mean, I don't think – I think out of everything, he is not the problem in Minnesota. Everything else around him, yes, is the problem. They don't have a great quarterback. Uh, it's actually been announced that Josh Freeman will be starting this week for the uh, Vikings. So, Really? Yeah. So keep that in mind when we get to the Monday Nighter. Uh, <laughs> So, but, uh, yeah, I, I went with the Panthers only because I'm hoping Cam Newton can uh, keep what he did. Now, I'm not going to beg on you picking the Rams, or Adam, he picked the Rams as well. James went with me, and he picked the Panthers. Uh, here's the reason why I wouldn't beg on the Rams is because the Rams showed last week that they could play a very solid football game, and they actually uh, won over the Texans, and you were the only one who picked them last week. Yeah, I don't know what the Tetons are doing this year. They seem to be trying to lose. <sighs> yeah, but you know what? I have to say, like, whether you like or hate the Texans, what the fans did when Matt Schaub went down was an uh, inappropriate. Yeah, that was that was just that, that was, was that was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible sportsmanship. I mean, the, the guy plays his heart out. Whether he's ba- good or bad, he plays his heart out. Uh. To do that because of a guy like uh, that's that's just it, oh, it's it's bad. It, I mean, I know as a fan, you're paying 
upwards of fifty to three hundred dollars for a ticket, maybe. You have the right to cheer and boo as you will, but I mean, have some respect. So, so let's move on to the next game. We got two Rams picks, two Panthers picks in that last one. Moving on, we have the Bengals taking on the Lions in Detroit. Adam has picked the Bengals, and James has picked the Lions. Well, James and I are together on this one. Go Lions. <laughs> Tyler needs a big AFC North loss for the Bengals and the Ravens and the Browns <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, I am also going with the Lions, and I'm going to say things that I've said before about this team. Reggie freaking Bush. Uh, he's so versatile. Uh, you throw in... Calvin Johnson, who came back last week, uh, wasn't much of a factor, but he probably will be more this week, especially with the game being in Detroit. Uh, I like uh, I like the fact that they did win last week against the Browns, which uh, that was, I believe, your upset pick last week. You had the Browns on that one. Mm, but came close. It did come close, but I think... In this respect, I've got to – I mean, we saw the Bills push the Bengals right to their brink of losing. If the Bills can do that with a – technically at the time, a third-string practice squad quarterback, when you come into Detroit and you got Matt Stafford throwing the ball around and Reggie Bush running it, I mean, <laughs> i got to go with the Lions. I think, Yeah, i got the Lions too. I think they're trying to prove something this year. And that they can compete with the Bears and the Packers, and that they can take this division. Yep, I agree. I think they're playing to win the division all out. Something I don't think they haven't done for years. No, no, definitely not. I mean, the Bengals, you could argue, are probably trying to do the same thing because for a long time they've been dominated by Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Yeah, and but I think the Lions have a better chance. Yeah, and and like you said, you need that loss for the uh, <laughs> for your Steelers. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying anything else until we get to that game. I got right. a lot of stuff to go. All right, so next up we have the 49ers taking on the Tennessee Titans, and I have a feeling this is going to be a clean sweep across the board. I'm picking the 49ers. James is picking the 49ers. Adam's picking the 49ers. Who do you got? Tyler's upset pick of the week. <laughs> go Titans at home. I love what the Titans have been doing this year. I don't know why. I've never been a big Titans fan. <laughs> I think they got this at home. Oh, go Titans. All right. Uh, it's my upset pick of the week. I'm picking the 49ers because strong it's defense, the 49ers. Uh, great offense. I mean, Colin Kaepernick, yeah, he's had some stinkers. Uh, we've seen that already this year. I mean, they are 4-2, and two, so they have lost a couple of games. But he's still Colin Kaepernick. He's still a pretty decent quarterback. And you always got to factor in the Gore machine. Frank Gore, uh <laughs> I don't know. I, I got to go with the 49ers. I do agree. I have liked what Tennessee has done this year. I just don't think it's going to be enough to beat the 49ers, even though the Tennessee Titans are at home. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, next up, Texans taking on the Chiefs in KC. Yeah, I got the Chiefs. I don't know what the Texans are doing this year. They're trying, like, last year was, what, the first time they made the playoffs? Because they had always tried and they had always failed. They finally got a good team together. They made the playoffs. They did well. And then this year, they're just like, eh, we're going to throw pit sits five games in a row because we can. Yeah, um, I agree. I have no idea what the Texans are doing this year. I mean, I have Arian Foster in a couple of leagues, actually. And, I mean, the guy is just not playing well. Andre Johnson's not playing well. Matt Schaub's playing like a... Uh, like Eli Manning, <laughs> like Eli Manning this year, not Eli Manning in the past. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on in in, tex- in the Texans locker room, but there's definitely something up because they're not this. They didn't make a lot of changes, and I mean they still have JJ Watt on defense. They still have uh, a pretty solid defense by all accounts. I mean they're they're ranked low because they keep giving up. Uh, pick sixes and everything else. Like, I mean, that doesn't affect defensive stats, but you know they're not the greatest, uh, or they're not the worst defense in the league. But I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, I agree. I have to go with the Chiefs on this, and that also makes that another clean slate because James and Adam both picked the Chiefs. And how could you not? First of all, they're in Kansas City. 
They are a perfect uh, 6-0 team. I mean, it's going to take something fluky to beat them. Usually does with unbeaten teams. Uh, especially at I just this want to point out, I was just looking at some stats as far as net points go. Yeah. The Houston Texans have negative 71. Are they really that bad? Yep. Now, that, does, that doesn't take the cake. Take the cake goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, I know they're with a negative hundred and twenty eight. Yeah, they are they are horrendous. That is true. But I know that uh there's another team that's pretty bad, the Giants are negative hundred and six, I think. Yep, hundred and six. So yeah. So I mean, yeah, the Texans are bad at negative seventy one, so they are giving up a lot of points. Um Okay, maybe their defense isn't even as good this year. But it's strange because there wasn't a lot of change there, and that's what makes it even more mind-boggling because there wasn't a lot of change in Houston. Or, yeah, Houston. I was like, are they still in Houston? Because you never know sometimes. Uh, there's not been a lot of change there, and yet they're a 2-4 team now. See, the Texans' defense is only allowing 252 yards per game. Mm-hmm. But they're giving but up they're, points. But they're allowing 29.5 points per game. And that goes now, to the Now, just wait. Listen to this. Can't, no, this is the defensive. Yeah, but defensive what I'm saying is like interceptions change the field position, right? You said yeah. they're only allowing 200 and some odd yards per game. That 252. Means, okay, so that means they're giving up the ball – probably on either their side of the field or just across the 50. Now, I just want to point out uh, Kansas City is giving up 306 yards per game, so they're giving up 50 more yards per game, Mm -hmm. but they're only allowing 10.8 points per game. That's almost a third. Yeah. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're giving up long drives, but they're stopping. They're bending but not breaking, so to speak. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, I mean... They're, That's they're all on the, the ball. offense. They're, they're turning the ball over. Exactly. They're turning the ball over in their territory or just across the 50, maybe just into uh, the opponent's territory. And so the, the the offense for the opposing team doesn't have far to go. So they're, they're only giving up 250 yards, but every single time they're giving up touchdowns after touchdown as opposed to, like, holding the field goals or causing turnovers themselves. So... When you're doing that, yeah, you're going to lose giving up less, less yardage. So, All right, so let's get to a game that I know you're anxious to talk about. The Ravens at the Steelers. Well, I, I think I'm alone on this one, but I got the Steelers this game. Oh, well, you're not alone. Oh, really? Who but, else is going with Unfortunately, I'm not going with you this week. <laughs> it is James you, that is going with you. You will rue that. <laughs> I might, I might, I might. But as James is going with you, he is also picking the Steelers this week. Uh, I can't blame you for picking the Steelers. First of all, I just want to say team. this is my bold prediction of the year. If Pittsburgh wins at home against Baltimore, uh-huh. they take the division. <laughs> that yep. would be interesting. If they can, if they can beat Baltimore at home, they will take this division. All right, all right. That's a, that's a prediction. It's on the podcast. We got it here for you. All right. So <laughs> I picked the now, Ravens. Um, Mostly because I'm still, like, I mean, yes, the Steelers won. And I'm glad that they're not one of those basement-feeding Owen Ofer teams, you know. But they haven't shown me enough yet. And not that the Ravens have. This, honestly, and I'm going to tell you how I picked this, and this was an honest-to-goodness truth. I took a coin. I said, Steelers is heads. Ravens is tails. I flipped it. My cat chased it. It landed tails, so I went with the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, it, honestly, this was a, literally, for me, a coin toss. So I went with the Ravens, and Adam went with the Ravens. I think he's doing it more because you he knows you're picking the Steelers, but I can't vote for him because he's sick and not here to vote for himself. <laughs> I'm just saying, yes, Pittsburgh has done a lot wrong this year. Uh-huh. There's been huge holes in their offense, their special teams, their defense. But last week, well, you saw a progression. Yep. They did terrible, 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 but they slowly got better each game. They did actually do something against Minnesota. Yeah, as I said. And I, then I, they got the bye week. They consolidated. Tomlin made some changes. He banned them from the game's room, banned games in the locker room. He also, after last week, he banned Somersault into the end zone. Yeah, I heard about that one. Anyway, and then about last week, though. 
they did some good stuff against uh, New York Jets. They got the uh, takeaways they've been needing in when on when New York was doing long drives. Yeah. And they were actually able to put together some good drives and get some key third down conversions. Yeah. If Pittsburgh can continue that progression of improvement and take what they did wrong against the Jets and fits it and continue and take what they did good against the Jets and do that better, I think they didn't beat the Ravens. And especially since the Ravens have not been no, living up to their full potential. They're a different team. Everybody says, Oh, they're not gonna be that much different. Yeah, they are. They they are definitely a different team. They traded um, and got rid of too much talent. Yeah, th- yeah, they lost a lot of talent. They they lost talent to either free agency, trades, or retirement. Because as we all know, Ray Lewis, whether he was as good as he was when he was in his prime, that's well, debatable. Obviously not, but it had but... had nothing to do with that with Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis was the heart and soul of that team. And losing that as I said on the first episode of this, it was huge for them. I'm not picking the Ravens to spite you. I'm not picking the Steelers because they're, they're, they haven't been consistent. And I will say that, yes, their, their loss against the Vikings in London was probably their best game that they lost. Like, that was the most well-played game that they played but still lost. I mean, there was obviously some mistakes, and there were some mistakes. But it to me, it seemed that they played a much better uh, game overall. And then they came back after the bye week, as you said, and they beat the the Jets. Now, I picked the Steelers last week more so because I d- didn't think the Jets uh, could win, even though Geno Smith has had some flashes of brilliance. He's still a rookie quarterback, and when you put a rookie quarterback in, even against the Steelers' defense that hadn't played up to the Steelers' defense, it is still the Steelers' defense. Thank you, thank you. So, I mean, I, I, I agree, but on this game in particular, even though it may come and bite me in the ass, and it could very well do that, first of all, Pittsburgh is at home, which means I maybe should have had a two-headed coin, but... <laughs> uh, I'm just to point out... <laughs> When the Steelers win, you will be receiving some text messages. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and if, God forbid, they lose, I'm turning my phone off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. But, yeah, I did go with the Ravens. But, Adam, I don't know why he picked the Ravens. I'm just thinking it's because he didn't want to pick the Steelers. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the NFL pick them right now, and the user consensus is 72% on the side of the Ravens. Uh, maybe that's what he went with. All right. So let's move on to the next game. Uh, the Browns in Green Bay, taking on the Packers. Yeah, I got the Packers in Lambeau Field, showing that they got something to prove. I think they're going to beat the Browns, especially since Hoyer is no longer the quarterback. If Hoyer was the quarterback, I might have gone Browns, but... Now, when I was making up the list of the games for the week so that I could, you know, type in our picks and keep a record of it, I figured, I looked at this game, and I'm like, this is going to be a clean sweep. Everybody's going to pick the Packers. Well, I was wrong. Somebody actually picked the Browns, and it wasn't me, and it wasn't Adam. Mr. I would have thought it would be Adam. Mr. James the picked the Browns. Wow. Yeah. James is trying to take my title of upset picker. I think so, because he's got the Browns going into Lambeau, beating the Packers. I don't know what he was smoking, but maybe we should get some. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't see it. I don't I, see I, it. I mean, Brandon Whedon has not shown that he can play well on that offense. Not to offense. mention, Lambo's not that easy to win in. No, it's not. It's not. It's no Seattle. But at the same time, it is a tough place to play. And, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, even without one of his leading receivers, I forget which one's out because it's hard to tell with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Eddie Lacy's looked good as a running back. Uh, I think the reason he did it is because of all the injuries. But – Eddie Lacy's back. Uh, or yeah, Eddie but, Lacy's uh, been James playing. Jones and Randall Cobb are both out. Yes, I agree. And and but they they still have people that can catch the ball there, and that's the thing. I think um, Green Bay has is, is like Aaron Rodgers is a skilled quarterback. Whether you like him or you don't, he's still a skilled quarterback. And uh, it's the same thing with Tom Brady. I hate the guy, but he's still a skilled quarterback. Um. I do know that the Packers tried to sign a wide receiver this past week only to have the Broncos call him up from the Packers squad so that they couldn't sign him, I guess. 
<laughs> so uh, they they are looking for help at wide receiver, but I think there's enough there right now to beat the Browns. I I don't know what James was thinking when he picked the Browns. He just sends me the picks. He just writes the names, and it's like that's it. Gives no explanation. But yes, I thought this was going to be a clean sweep, and it's not. So let's go to another one that uh, could cause controversy. It's already causing controversy, and that's the Sunday night game. I'm looking forward to this very much. The Broncos in Indianapolis, Peyton's return. I'm just going to say this. Indy showed what their weaknesses are in San Diego. They showed how they could be beat. And I don't think Peyton Manning is all that happy with with the game last week. No. And there was a lot of criticism for how not they how they played compared to how they had been playing. Uh-huh. And not to mention, come on, Peyton Manning is going back to Indianapolis. That is his stadium. He has so many wins there; it's not even funny. I think he's going to go back to Indy and he's going to show Luck what a real quarterback looks like. I'm guessing you're picking the Broncos. <laughs> Yes, by the way, I'm picking the Broncos. <laughs> also, if I was him, I know he's a classy guy and he's probably not going this, yeah. but a less classy person would be like, yo, you got rid of me because you thought I was done? Check this out. Uh, you're right. He is a classy guy and he will never go there. However, the owner of the Broncos, uh, or sorry, not owner, um, what is he, GM? John Elway? I, I forget what he is. I thought he was a VP the, uh, football yeah, operations. Yeah, something like that. He went there <laughs> because Ursay, uh, the owner of the Colts. Oh, no, it was there. actually John Fox. Oh, was it Fox that went there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know somebody in the Broncos organization went there because basically defending his quarterback, and that's fine. Uh, we all know that Peyton is a very classy guy, and he'll never go there. So to have somebody actually go there after the comments that Ursay had made, and I mean, I don't think Ursay meant them in a negative way. He even said that. Manning said, go and draft Luck. I think Manning was under the impression that he was going to be there to mentor Luck, but <laughs> I, I, I don't think at the time that Peyton said it, he, he was he thought he was going to be gone. He th- I, I think he was like, yeah, you go get Luck, because he is a future great star, and, you know, I'll mentor him, and then, you know, we'll go, no, uh, that's not what happened. <laughs> but I think that's more what Peyton might have been thinking when he said, yeah, definitely draft him. So, I, I don't know. I, I agree. I think Denver's going to go in there and do what Denver's been doing, and that's win. And uh, even though it's in Indianapolis, you're right. This is the stadium that Peyton built. Not by himself. Yeah, I, I can't see it being that much of a home crowd. This is going to be Just a because, split crowd. I mean... Yeah, because, I mean, Col- Colts fans are still going to love Payne Manning for all the stuff he did Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So. His his reception, I don't know. Uh, this is a Sunday night. This is a primetime game. Because, I, I mean, hope it's, not, it's, not like, it's not like he pulled a Brett Favre and yeah. left on his own. No. He was sent away. Exactly. That's a huge difference. Uh, I am very, I'm making sure I am home. Like, I always go out and do my laundry on Sunday, so I miss a lot of the uh, late afternoon games like the 425 games i am making sure i am home for this game i want to watch this game so badly uh this is going to be a fantastic sunday nighter unlike our next game which is the monday nighter and i think when the nfl made this schedule they were hoping for such a better matchup than the minnesota vikings in new york (laughs) taking on the giants both teams have a combined one win and 10 losses wow isn't that? I'm going. I'm going Vikings. You are. Yeah, just because the Giants will find a, a way to lose. <laughs> just no. Well, I think the Giants just find ways to lose. Like when great quarterbacks and players find ways to win when they shouldn't, like Tom Brady did last week. Yep. The Giants this year are just finding ways to lose. Uh, and I think they might have to get a little bit creative this week, but they're going to figure out a way anyway. Okay, here's my analysis. I'm picking the Giants. I'm actually saying they're going to win number one. They're not going to be an 0 for team. That's all going to be on Jacksonville and Tampa Bay. Uh, <laughs> I'm picking the Giants for this reason, or for a couple of reasons. First reason, Josh Freeman. As I said earlier, he is the starter for the Vikings this coming Friday night. I don't think that improves the team any better than Christian Ponder or the other guy. 
<laughs> Can't even, I don't even know his name right now. That's how good he is. He's the other guy. He's the other guy. Uh, the Vikings are still one dimensional. They are all Adrian Peterson. Now, that's not saying that Adrian Peterson isn't a great running back. He is absolutely a great running back. In fact, I think if this team was better than, like, if this team had a quarterback, he could easily rush for 2,500 yards in a season. Because they could use play action pass a lot more. And then they can use deep passes a lot more, which sets up your running game so well. They'd be ahead in games. He'd be running out the ball. I mean, easily he could rush for 2,500 yards. However, they are not a good passing team. It is all one-dimensional. I say the Giants are just going to pack the box. And I think Eli is going to have his best game of the year so far, which isn't hard to do at this point. And uh, I think you're going to see a Giants win. And apparently Adam and James agree with me because they both picked the Giants as well. I thought this might be a little bit more split, but we got three Giants picks to your one Vikings pick. Go Vikings. You you might have uh, either – you're either going to have like a huge week or a horrible week this week. <laughs> well, considering I'm always a competitor, I think I'm going to have a great week. <laughs> it's going to go one way or the other because you definitely have some picks in there that are off kilter to what the rest of us have picked. So, like I said, you're either going to have a huge lead come the end of the week, or you're going to be way behind come the end of the week. We do have as, long as, my, as long as the Steelers win, <laughs> it's all good with it's me. It's all gravy, right? <laughs> all right, so that is Week 7's picks. I hope uh, we've made some great analysis, even though we're not really analysts. <laughs> We do our amateur analysis. That's all we can do, right? <laughs> and it's always fun. It's always fun. So until next week, that is it for this week. Hopefully we'll get Adam back next week. But, you know, we went OG this week. It's just me and Tyler. So <laughs> Now, I just want to point out to all our listeners out there, because Adam couldn't make it tonight, I'm going to go on record and say Bears suck. <laughs> that's just because Adam didn't make it. So that's what happens yes. when you're not here, Adam. Bears go Steelers. <laughs> go Bills. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, let's not push it. <laughs> we got to push it. Come on. Go Bills. Go Steelers. <laughs> no, no, yes, go Steelers, but let's not push it with the Bills. That's a little much. Uh, I got to push it because, you know, somebody's got to love the Bills. <laughs> you know what? They sell a whole game, so that's all I say. <laughs> I mean, they needed a little help last week. That's okay. Yeah, but Toronto sells out home games. That's not saying much. Hey, they're they're top of their league. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a Toronto fan anyway. All right, so have a great week, everyone, and we'll see you back here next week. Ciao. Thanks for listening to Another Podcast from AnotherPodcast.com. Don't forget to go on iTunes and or download rate right from AnotherPodcast.com. That's E-H-N-O-T-H-E-R Podcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at Another Podcast. Be sure to check back for tomorrow's show only on Another Podcast, your Canadian podcast network. AnotherPodcast.com, not a sponsor.